Hey y'all, welcome to episode 164 of Consignment Chats. We got something important to discuss today, a question that we have pop up so often that it's silly that we have not gone into a quick deep dive on this. Does a reseller need a website? Hmm. hmm. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no as well. I'm going to yeah. agree. However, 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 we both have them. <laughs> <laughs> there is a time and a place for it but quick answer no but there is way more to it than than just a simple answer there are many shades of gray in here guys um it is not black and white for sure 50 so, shades of gray i don't know no. <laughs> definitely not um all right so do they need a website no but like, let's back it up a little bit what what would you ask somebody? Like when we do our coaching, we ask first question, like, what is your goal? Like, what, what do you, what do you, what is your goal with your business? Do we have like two, let's say two different models here. Let's just keep it simple. Let's say you're somebody that just wants to put stuff up and sell it. And you're not worried about your branding. You're not worried about marketing your business. I just want to, for example, put stuff up on eBay and sell it. You don't need a website. No. And there are lots of successful people, as we've said before, that don't do social media, that don't do, you know, don't have a website, that aren't directing people to their brand. They just put stuff up and they sell it and they make money and they have a super streamlined, easy business model. Mm -hmm. So no, they would not need a website and it probably would just be extra, extra fluff. Yeah. I got a question though. Sure. What's Would we recommend they go ahead and just reserve that website for future just in case? Absolutely. You should have your business named, whether you're using this strategy of just putting stuff up on eBay or not, you should have a business name and you should have your business name, domain name reserved. You don't ever have to use it, but you, sh you should own it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I did this as a side hustle for almost a decade. And then when I went full time, uh, my flow changed, my business plan changed and I opened my website. So I'm, I'm glad it was there. Um, mm. but it was close. It almost wasn't, there was a, there was a similar business and luckily they didn't have a website. <laughs> <laughs> you want to own it, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so no matter what you're, no matter what it is, you should own the domain for your business and your business name. Okay. So let's say, all right. So those are the people that probably we wouldn't recommend have a website. What about somebody that's kind of in between like I, or should we go to the other extreme? Yeah, what's like the other I extreme? want, I would say that extreme, the other extreme of, of, so we have our not put it, just putting stuff up on eBay or what, on whatever marketplace, selling it, not working on your brand, not doing any of that. Um, just making money that way. The other extreme would be I'm developing a brand. I'm on all the social media platforms. I, I you have a brand, I you should probably have, a, well, you already have your domain name because everybody does, right? Everybody needs that. But I'm doing all of that development and I'm driving, maybe I have a brick and mortar. Maybe I have, you have your domain name. You should have a website. Do you have to sell on the website? No. No. Okay. I mean, if, if if it's extreme, I guess you're just going all in, you're doing it all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But otherwise you can just direct it to where you do sell. You can just, it's something that people can search and find you, but then the, it can show them where you're actually at. So it's not a, an extra thing. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to be an extra thing that you need to manage. Right. So mm -hmm. what we've seen a lot of people, especially in the consignment space do is they think they're going to have a website and this is not to knock anybody. They are going to have a website and they're going to have customers, right? I'm going to do the traditional Shopify route. I'm going to put my stuff up online and everything's going to be, I'm going to have customers. I'm selling online. Mm -hmm. It doesn't quite work that way, does it? No, no this is where we talk about the difference between selling on a platform like Shopify versus a platform like eBay or yes. Mari or Poshmark. Right. Yeah, the biggest right. difference is your audience. Yeah. I mean, you have to develop, let's say you have a website and you're using it for selling purposes and that is your main source of, of income. 
the people aren't just going to come to you. You have to drive all of that traffic to your website. You don't have a built-in audience. Um, I can't stress enough how difficult it is and what a commitment it is to drive people to your website and drive that traffic. So I hate to see anybody start like that unless they have some kind of crazy big audience uh, right. to open a website that they're going to sell on and expect that uh, people are just going to come to them because they're online. It doesn't, it really doesn't work like that. And almost what 99% of the cases just right. doesn't work like that. Yeah, I maybe get maybe one sale a month just from a random Google or like one mm -hmm. that I didn't put any work into. They just randomly found me maybe one sale a month. Sometimes it's a little more, sometimes it's zero. So right. now yeah. that being said, I do have a website for my business. Um, but the reason that I have it is because it links my consignment software so that it automatically things go to my Shopify, it's on the website, and then I can easily link it to list perfectly and I can cross list to all the areas. Um, and then there's other apps within Shopify if you're selling other ways. Uh, I think they have like Amazon apps and, and things like that. So you can sync all of your items to those platforms. So for me, it, it was a benefit just to have it as a link and be there. And then I will take it to the next level and when I'm making local sales or when I'm talking to people about things that they've already purchased, I can direct them to my website um, if they want to add additional things. Now, I don't do that for like eBay and Poshmark and things like that because you don't do off-site um, off sa sales or direct them anywhere besides the platform you're selling on. Um, but I will for the local things and, and my Facebook deals and things like that. I'll direct them over there. Hopefully they'll add extra things. It, it normally works out. But I mean, I direct a lot of people to that website. And even then, you know, only 10% add something to their sale. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, look at it the other way around is that you can use other platform. You don't. I use eBay, um, not Poshmark, mm -hmm. because it's against the terms of service. However, I do use some of my eBay customers and I do direct them to my brand, which is my mm -hmm. website. And I use that larger audience to drive traffic to my business, my brand, once they identify with my brand. Now that is not against eBay's terms of service to include like a QR code or anything like that. So look at the other way as you want to use those bigger platforms to drive traffic to your brand if you decide to have a brand and that is what you want to do. Yeah. Now you mentioned Facebook and I know this is a little off topic, but we're talking about things to consider with the website versus not a website. Yeah. Uh, one of the things a lot of people do so much business on Facebook, but the difference between Facebook and a website to keep in mind is you don't own your Facebook, but you would own your website. Mm -hmm. Facebook can pull you down anytime they want, but your website is yours. Mm -hmm. So if you have built a large business, it for safety purposes might be worth putting a website together so that you have another platform that you know you own all of that work. And yes. there is a main landing place for all of that. If one of these other platforms decides to... yeah do away with it or them or you or whatever, you know, it happens. And that was one of my deciding factors for a website as well was because I had all of my terms and things. Um, I had them in a separate document and I had them listed on Facebook and I would uh, interact with clients and things on there and I would direct them to the file on Facebook. And sometimes that worked, sometimes it didn't. It was, it was a pain in the butt if people could see it or if my Facebook was going to be locked that day and I was going to be in Facebook jail for who knows what reason. Mm -hmm. But I can direct all inquiries to my website and I have a mm -hmm. consign with us page and I have a consign for charity page and I have, so I use it a lot. It's the link for my items and it's an informational thing. I don't count on it for sales like at all. It's just convenience and information at that point. Yeah. And I, lo I love the idea of not putting all your eggs in one basket and, and having that off of a platform as something you own. That's a really good incentive to have um, a website. Mm -hmm. Now, all right. When we're talking website, I started with the extreme of like Shopify and selling on a website. Right. Now, Let's say you you know you don't want to sell you know you don't want to sell on your website. I personally don't um, sell on my website. I have links to my eBay categories um, on my website. 
and that's how I work it. Uh, even though I do have Shopify, um, I don't use that on my website. But all right, so you have you have that extra like Samantha is selling on her website. She has Shopify integrated with it. Mine is just links. Um, one of the things you can do if you because you already own the domain or your name is you can set up something free, right? Like a link tree that just mm -hmm. says, you know, um, Libby's resale shop. And it has a link to my eBay store. It has a link to um, my YouTube channel. It has whatever. And you can just do that like Linktree. I think Milkshake is another free one that, that you can set up simple. It's not costing you anything. And you at least own that little piece and you can direct people where you want them to go. Yeah. For if you'd like to see an example. Yeah. Go to the right, because <laughs> right. we've seen, I mean, it was the trend years ago, right? Like you built this big fancy website, which is, you know, of course I had to stay on trend and did that. But if I was to go back and do it now, I would just do the link tree and direct people to where I want them to go. And yeah. it doesn't have to be, free. you don't get all the analytics with the free and, you know, the SEO and all of that stuff. But mm -hmm. You really have to go back to your business plan and think about what you want. That's what, like, saying, what like, are you trying to get out it? of it? How do I know? How do I decide? Yeah. I mean, you really need to go back and, and look at what your goals are. Where are you trying to go? Like we coach people through this all the time. Where are you trying to go with your business? What is important? Is the website important to you or not? I think for most people, it would not be in a simple structure. We've seen so many people go from the big fancy website and say, I just want a free um a free link to my to my domain that I can use or not use mm -hmm. and and go that route so that everybody's coming down from that like big website idea and you know selling on the website and just putting up a simple thing with links so think yeah. about your customer your ideal customer what do they want to see yes yeah i think that's that is the biggest question that i see in the reseller world when people are are asking you know they're just starting out and they're saying okay I feel comfortable with selling on Poshmark now. Should I get a website? I feel comfortable with selling. Mm. They're, they're thinking of it as like an added platform. Like it's another platform that they're going to add. And if you're thinking about it in that aspect, it is so, so, so much work. And it is so hard to get that going. And it's, it's not the traditional reseller thing where you're going to load your items up there and you're going to get people that are on there and it, it's just, it doesn't work like that. You have to know so much about SEO and how to make Shopify or whatever website you're using worth it. And it's, there's just so much that takes away from actual reselling. And I, I think so many people get discouraged by it. So in the general scheme of things, if you think it's another platform and it's something that you should add, it's not. Don't do it. Don't this is almost platform. like a public service announcement. Right. Like the more you know. Yeah. You don't need another platform. You need sales. And we're yes. sales, right? Like yes. mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's no there's there aren't buyers built into your website because it's right. it's new and it's fresh and you have to put those buyers on there. Whereas if you add Etsy or you add eBay or you add there's already buyers there. They've already done all of that. They've made that website for you and you just need to put your items up. Absolutely. That being awesome. said, again, I'm going to remind you, though, grab your business domain and lock it in. Mm -hmm. I just put that out there because, yeah. as we know, if we went through the history of all of our businesses, they have changed from day one to now. And you just don't know where you're going to go and how you're going to grow. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are some other questions you, like, you get out there? The posh, I didn't know. I, I didn't realize that one. Like some of that was a common question that, that yeah. people have. Um, so I guess when they ask the question, what do you think people are hoping to get out of their website? Like more sales? or they, I think that they truly believe that if they have okay. items listed there, people are going to buy them. It's more exposure. It's more eyes on your things. It's, it's a, like another platform. Sometimes okay. I think, too, for smaller resellers, it feels like it gives them more validation as a business. I think a lot of times people feel more validated to be able to say, I have a website. And if that is something that you feel strongly about, that's where something like a link tree could be an mm -hmm. easier, free way to give you that credibility that you might think you need 
or that you you seek. Yeah, and I mean, that is a really, I'm thinking about going from the brick and mortar to going exclusively online. That was a real struggle with my brand was that validity that, you know, this is all new. People have never done online consignment. Have you closed the business? Like what? And they would see the website or they would see the Facebook and they're like, wow, you have like a real business here. Yeah. Because that really like, wasn't, wasn't a thing back then when you did it. You right. Were the trailblazers of that, really. Yeah. Online. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you feel like maybe you're consigned, if you're a consignment seller, if your um, audience is, is struggling with that a little bit, um, that might be a great reason to have at least a landing page and to really put out there what you are what you are doing because uh, it is, does give people a, a sense of of comfort that you are a real business. I I can't tell you how many times people had said that to me. Like, is that a real business? Yeah, no. Take the quotes away. It's a real business. Right. Yeah, but the website <laughs> definitely helped in that respect. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But I mean. In the other hand, you can also do that with your eBay storefront. You can do it with Poshmark by putting your banners and your logos up. And mm -hmm. and so there, there are other ways to do that as well. Don't feel that the pressure of that you have to do a website to in order to look legit or anything like that. Um, and then don't feel that you have to maintain that website either. So you put it up there and it has your name and it has your colors and it has all your branding and it looks good. And then direct it somewhere, like we said before. Just send it somewhere else where you, that you already put the work into and don't make it something that you have to constantly maintain. Yeah, as I've mentioned before, that consistency in your branding is a really big key to building trust with your buyers. And you can do that just within your selling platforms, like Samantha was saying. If you make your Poshmark and your eBay store mm -hmm. and just your selling platforms, um, and your social media platforms show that branding without a website, just that structure alone will garner some good trust and following for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't, oh, don't overcomplicate it. Don't make it fancy. Trust me. Don't make it fancy. It's not worth it. <laughs> All right, make sure we're going to stop right now. Make sure you like, you subscribe. If you still have questions, you're like, that's not why I was asking about a website at all, then put that in the comments or go over to our free Facebook community and ask your questions there. Mm -hmm. And we'll make sure that we get you more answers. And no, my I'll probably just tell you no in a different way. Right, no in a different tone. <laughs> I'm going to tell you to do this. Everybody take your right finger. Point to your right shoulder. Come on, point, ladies, point. You know I don't know my right. All right, hold on. Point. Okay. And you're going to put a little Libby on your shoulder who's going to say to you, does this get you to your final goal? Amen. That's the biggest, biggest question in any decision you make. So you put that little Libby on your shoulder. If you need that Libby face-to-face, -face, well, we got coaching for that in our Patreon. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> and all of us little Libby, Molly, and Samantha's right there with you to help you. Yeah. Yeah. And just, you know, really, sometimes it's overwhelming to step through and, and know what your actual goal is and where you are headed. But it is so important to know what they are, because that is how you base all of your decisions. Do I need a website? You know, how is this? How is this going to work for me? We did our um, See It With C-Chat series, which we'll probably have a couple more coming up here, where you can see different um, businesses and the flow and how they use a website or don't use a website and how that plays into, into their businesses or mm -hmm. contributes. So that's always, that's a, that's a good resource. I think if you're getting overwhelmed by stuff, um, the see it with C chats, like business process videos are, are, are helpful yeah. and uh, we can help you structure your business in an, in an efficient way as well. Yeah. If you already have a different business structure and we didn't touch on that, that way that you do things and you want to show us, you could be a see it with C chat. Send us a message, comment below. We'll check out your process and see if we want to show everybody. Absolutely. Oh, love yeah. to share. We love to share. Because there are a million different ways to do it. So many ways. So many yeah. different ways. All right. Amazing. So I'm going to, I want to, I want to revisit something that I swore I would ask you guys about. And it was our let go, let it go episode, letting go episode. <laughs> and this may be one of the things that people end up let, letting go is the fact that 
they feel that they have to have a website. They're listening to outside mm -hmm. pressure. They're not really focusing on what they think they should do. Um, I know we've all been guilty of that, right? Like, oh my gosh, yes. You know, Janet down the street has a website. She said, you know, building her SEO was the best thing she ever did. And, you know, it, it's easy to listen to all those outside pressures, but really we have to look at our business and what our goals are. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? Janet down the street, she's not in business anymore. Um, <laughs> why? <laughs> we just closed her doors. Just like... <laughs> Janet's she couldn't. She couldn't get it. It's not. Oh, Janet! <laughs> Too many eggs in that in those baskets. You just. Oh, Janet. Oh, Janet. I'm sorry, Janet. Damn it, Janet. Oh, All right. Too far. You lost control. And oof, that hurt. I hope there's really not a Janet out there. Right. This is not based on a real story. Oh my gosh. I'm going to get some hate mail now. All the Janets in our community are going to be up in arms. I'm sorry, oh, Janet. Look what you've done. <laughs> What you've done. But we've talked about our real live version with consignment chats and how we did that by getting caught up in the whole YouTube thing of how we need right. to be famous YouTubers and we need to have 14,000 followers and subscribers and da 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 da. Mm -hmm. realized, wait a minute, no, we don't. <laughs> That's not us. <laughs> that We're is not our goal. I mean, yeah. could we? yes, I could make every post and video edit a real drama people grabber but it's not our goal that's not what we do so we have to we we do it ourselves so we're not just preaching we are preaching from experience of catching ourselves doing it often and having to reel it back in and remind ourselves of what our goal is and who we are and yeah sometimes the drama does sound fun though you can't share us with other people and get them to <laughs> it's not what we're saying but it's not our priority. Our priority is to have a nice, supportive, collaborative community that we yeah. can grow with and help grow and support and educate and all that fun stuff. Yeah. So the title to this episode is not going to be Libby makes all the Janets mad. Like <laughs> <laughs> Libby like, calls out Janet oh, down the street. <laughs> how Libby pissed off the reselling community. <laughs> Clickbait, clickbait. <laughs> clickbait out there in this episode. We'll that so, all right, letting go. Some people may be letting go of a website. We started actually consignment chats with a very, like a, a WordPress, like pretty fancy website. Yeah. We, we yeah. let that go. We let that go. We had blog posts. We had, but we let that go because it was not uh, furthering us our goal. We have a very simple link tree now that we can just manage and, and do our thing with. Um, and then what you were able to things? afford yeah. me. It was all about right. helping, really. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. It was all about making space for Samantha. We had That's what happens when you let things go, right? <laughs> you, you make space for amazing opportunities. <laughs> yes. So what um so what were some things I want to revisit the the letting go? I know this is the website episode, but I promise. So here we are. Um People want to know what you've thought about and what you've let go. So you're putting me on the spot again, and I can't remember what I was going to let go. <laughs> well, I had something the other day that you made me let go. Oh. Okay. Talk about it. I lost my mind for four and a half hours. This is so oh, embarrassing. Gosh. This is so oh, embarrassing gosh. to admit, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do it. True confessions. Um, I'm pretty good at letting stuff go. So this was even a shock to me. I sold a sun catcher. I had, and for like 12 bucks, I think it was like, like nothing. I couldn't find any of my sun catchers. There's five of them that I have in inventory. They're all missing. Oh. Not a single one. I went through every box, every, everything on did like I, whatever, over 10,000 items. I went through all of them and four and a half hours lost my mind. I couldn't find any of them. And then also I called Molly. Of money spending all that time looking for those items. Yeah, it was stupid. Thank you. So I called Molly. It was, that's why I'm embarrassed to admit it, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and tell you like this can, like this literally drove me nuts. I couldn't let it go. It was like the bat phone, like the red lights are blinking on my phone. Maybe, maybe. That's what her meltdown was the other day. I thought 
this was something like really serious and you weren't telling me because it was super like personal and like really and I was like oh okay no it was lost inventory no 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 that was another crisis that was a different one that was a different crisis 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 this week okay (laughs) that was more personal that That was more personal yeah Okay, that's not so bad then. She's had a couple this week. It's been a rough one, but she's made it through. Look yeah. at the smile. Look yeah. at that. Smile. Yeah, I so did you did you delist the other sun catchers? Well, Molly, tell them what you told me because okay. I needed a I needed a good like. Yeah, so she called me all upset about it, and she's like, I don't know what to do. Da, 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 and she was going on and on and on, and I finally stopped her, and I was like, Libby, how much time have you spent on these items, searching for this item? A couple hours, Libby. How much are you going to make off of this item when it sells? <laughs> like six bucks. <laughs> Libby, why are you even thinking twice <laughs> about this? Like, why? Like, I had to put it back. I said, I'm going to give it back to you. Like, is it getting you to your end goal? Is having these items and going through this getting you up? Like, are you going to hit your numbers? Are you going to? What damage is it going to do if you just remove the listing? So the problem, too, was that one sun catcher was with some other sun catchers. But in the end, the value of all those sun catchers together not finding them was still not worth it. My mm-hmm. suggestion was, because she couldn't let it go, was to go to sleep and not spend any more time. And the next day, if you feel you really have to give it one more go, which I get it, I've done that before, do it on a fresh day. Because right yeah. now you are so worked up that so you're seeing up. three of everything you're looking at. Because we all know, we've all been there. Any reseller has been there where you can't find that item. And then you wake up the next day and it's like right on top of the pile looking at you in the face. But you were so worked up about it that you walked past it seven times. So yeah. I said, go to sleep. And if you decide tomorrow that you need to give it another go, set a time limit. Look at the value in those items and set a time limit. How much more time are you willing to give up for these little items? Did she listen to me? No, no, I didn't. No, I didn't listen to me. I, I couldn't sleep, so I went back downstairs. She so had invested four hours. Oh, I had invested two hours at the point I talked to Molly and she gave me the strict talking to. I invested two and a half more after that. And then she I just can't do, I just, I just can't, da, 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 and I just sent her a little giffy or whatever it is of Elsa, let it go. Like, I did. At the four and a half hour mark, I canceled the sale. It was on Poshmark, so not a biggie. That was the other thing. Like, why was I, I even thinking I about it so much? It. it was on Poshmark. Right. Delisted all of the other sun catchers that I couldn't find and let it go. Now, y'all, please listen and learn from this. That would have been much better had she let it go during the phone conversation prior to spending another two and a half hours before letting it go. Like you really, I've told the story before about going to the bins and sourcing and finding that fry boot and not finding the other and realizing after a couple of hours, I have now wasted all of my profit searching for the match. Mm. Like sometimes you just have to stop yourself and look at the numbers and move on move on. I just, did it make you feel a little bit happy though that Libby was coming to you with this problem? Because normally we go to her with this problem. There's nothing better than to feed somebody's advice back to them with a big old spoon. Like I was like serving <laughs> guys. I had a ladle. I was pouring that in her mouth. I was like, oh. bring it. But she didn't listen to me. She didn't listen to me. Didn't even care. Didn't no. even listen. I, I did. I did. But all right. So here's the, the <laughs> funny part of this story. So my mom was away. She does. She'll like pull stuff for shipping sometimes. So she had been away for a couple of days and she came back because I texted her and said, have you, you know, did you see these around? And she's like, no. And uh, so she comes back and she was going to get me all riled up about it again. Well, I'll look. Did you look over here? Did you? I was like, I know I let it go. I let it go and she couldn't let it go. And she was like, I just, it has to be somewhere. And what, how many of them are, mi-? I was like, I let it go. I'm not going to talk about it. And the more I said, I wasn't going to talk about it, the angrier she got. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, I, so I, I had a, I had a, I had to talk her down. And I was like, no, it's gone. It's like, go. I don't care if I ever see them again, if they show up great, if they don't, I don't care. All right, yeah. so which Good episode job. Job. is it going to be episode 172, 183? 
199 that Libby comes back and goes, found them and relisted them. Found them. They're all here. <laughs> When's it gonna happen? It'll be the day after she actually deletes all of the photos and all the information about mm. them. That will be the moment where she's rid of them, and yeah. then they'll pop up and go, "Hi, mom." No, well, thank you, Consign Cloud. They'll be there forever. That's right. <laughs> that is right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Oh, that's good. Before we end this, because that was good humor. Well, wait, 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 wait! You guys don't get off no. that easy. What Before did you we end go? It. Just, I told you so I good. can't think of that. I was too busy on yours. <laughs> All right. So you held me accountable and called me out on the layout of my office because I've been talking like I, I just wanted a prettier wall. And apparently I need a better workflow for God's sakes. Um, so then we had that we had that a couple weeks ago. And I've just been saying, yeah, when I get caught up on stuff. Yeah, when I get caught up on stuff. I'll mm. rearrange it. Mm. Right. So I noticed she's not in her office right now. Well, it's prettier back here. <laughs> so, so I have started rearranging. I started taking stuff off the walls. I've got half the room cleaned out. I told my husband my plan because, you know, like that's a good step to light a fire under you is tell somebody else that is actually in the same state as you. Um, so he, he already has like paint ready and he's, yeah, he's ready to go. So... We are going to do it. Well, we were going to start painting this weekend, but he ended up have, getting called into work. Oh. So he's going to, we're going to do it in two weeks and we'll, we'll paint everything. And so I have like, I've started like bare bones in my office so that at whatever point he's ready to paint, we'll just be able to take out whatever boxes are in there or move them to the middle, paint and refresh. And it actually got me thinking like, I actually want to move my desk closer to my window and put the the hanger on the wall closest to my clothing rack because I'm an idiot. And I would be pulling the clothes off the clothing rack to move them over here. To mm -hmm. so I rethought my whole flow, and we're we're good. We got it. Oh, it's amazing. Okay, yeah. So wow. a, this weekend I'm doing a big office declutter rearranging setup because I've got so much stuff now. And that's our big focus this weekend in our organization word for 2024 is this space. Yeah. I am going to film it all. I promise. Film it all. I want you to do the same. Yeah. So I haven't filmed like any of me actually like sitting on the floor going through stuff at this point. Um, or I should have done it when I ripped my, my vinyl, my big vinyl saying off the wall. Oh, that would have been nice. Yes. That was fun. But I didn't, I didn't do that. I forgot it was there. It was covered up by rolly cards. Well, what did it say? Know, this is the future you've decided on or like something like that. It was something at the time, <laughs> at the time I had like a smaller desk and it was like right above my desk. And it was right before I quit my job. And I was like, I'm going to make this a business. And it was like super inspiring. And then as I've grown up and done all this stuff in my office, it kind of got covered up. So I moved a cart and I was like, oh yeah, that's there. <laughs> <laughs> but as we're, I'll definitely do some as we're painting and putting things back in order yeah, and, yeah. and do the, do the reveal. Yeah. Please do. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that is like such an incredible example of letting go. And it's something that you are doing that way because it was the way you always did it. Right. It just, like, yeah. And then when the I, way it always was. When I had thought about that corner, I was like, oh, yeah, I could move things to be closer. But I didn't truly think about my workflow until I was explaining it to my husband. And he was like, so that bar with all your clothes is staying there. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, okay, but you're going to do all this other stuff over here and I'm like, to, to prevent the steps from over there. And I'm like, oh, God. Okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought of one of my letting goes that I did that I was kind of proud of myself on. Yeah. I thought of one for you too, but I wonder if it's the same one. Okay. Um, so in my organization process and going through things that I've had from estates for two, anywhere from two to five years now, <laughs> I came across my mom's phone and mm -hmm. was trying to determine whether to sell it or what to do with it. And we were in one of our live listing groups that we do in our Patreon. And I was having this decision and asking Samantha because hers is a Samsung and I was trying to decide what to do with it, sell it, right. Or, you know, clear it all out and sell it or whatever. And as I'm going through it, this emotional little text from my son to my mom pops up. And so I start getting a little sentimental, right. But then I, I'm like, I don't want to erase it. I don't know what I want to do. Da, 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 da. Well, then I decided overnight that, you know what? 
I looked at this stuff. I read this stuff. If I'm going to keep it, I'm going to keep it used for my business. That's why I was going to keep it to have an actual photography phone versus using my phone for everything. Because there's so many times I'm trying to do something on my phone, but need to take photos at the mm -hmm. same time. Yeah. So this was the answer because these pictures that the Samsung Galaxy phone take are beautiful. Team Android people, team Android. <laughs> <laughs> So I was thinking, I'll keep my iPhone for that, use this Samsung, use it for photographs. But I don't want to open up this phone every time and get sentimental about my mom. I have enough memories of her all the time. When I'm working, I need to work. So I finally made that hard decision, and I just cleared that phone out. I sent I any important pictures that I didn't already have a copy of. I sent them in so we had the copies for, you know, memory sake. But I cleared it all out. I was proud of you for so many reasons during this process because you you brought it up on our Zoom. And when you start, you're like, I'm going to go through it right now. And I'm like, oh, God, this is going to be terrible. Like, why are you doing this on live TV, basically? Like, what? We have <laughs> so many people in here. You went through it. You did. I mean, you made us all cry with that text. It was fantastic and so sweet. So sweet. So sweet. And then the next morning when you're like, okay, phone's reset. Tell me how I use it. And I'm like, what? Like, I thought this was going to take weeks for you to decide to reset awesome. it or what, maybe you're going to keep it under your pillow for a while. I don't know. Everybody does things differently. I wouldn't have judged you for any of it, but I was just so pumped that you just process it so quickly and you're like, okay. And you jumped right into making it a part of your, your process. You let it go. Cause I'm organizing. I don't have time to sit on things for two and a half weeks. You did great. Yes. And I'm sure there's not a phone fairy. If I put it under my pillow, if I could put it under my pillow and the phone fairy would bring me a thousand bucks, I might've put it under my pillow. <laughs> that is just an amazing example of letting go. Yeah. yeah. It was good. It felt good. You know, and I wasn't sad about it. I never, I haven't been upset about it one bit. It was a good thing to do because it needs to be used for work. And hey, boom. So I just stuff. love that we got to, you got to share that with our Patreon community that it all happened right there. It was just, right? it was really, spe it was really special. I thought, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank y'all for being a part of it. Mm -hmm. All right. That was some of our letting go stuff. Was that the same thing, Libby? If not, we probably are. It wasn't, but that's okay. We okay. can save it for another time. I'm yeah, sure we'll all sure. have things we have to let go, probably on a weekly basis. <laughs> right. So one thing I want to do before we sign off and do our little toast is tell everybody of a free event that's coming up that my reseller Jeannie is doing. Um, it is on Wednesday, February 28th at 7 p.m. Eastern on my reseller Jeannie's YouTube and Facebook. They are doing a live Q&A about their accounting software. Their accounting software, we've talked about them before, Faith and Paul developed the software for resellers. That's right. Just for us, resellers. So um, I am so excited they're doing a Q&A because I want to go in there. I myself am a subscriber to my reseller genie and I have not been utilizing all that it offers. Um, it's one of those things that I've done and kind of been sitting back on and it needs to be part of my 2024 organization is getting into this. So I am going to RSVP. There is a link. If you join their Facebook group, um, follow them on YouTube. There is an RSVP link and it is all free and you can go on and they're going to do a demo of their product and what it does for us resellers. And, and they do lots of they're stuff. consignment ready. My reseller Jeannie is consignment ready. So and we have a code for that if you want to do it. Yes. Chat 15% off <laughs> the first month. So there's also that. And y'all, Faith and Paul are we've mentioned them so many times because they are just wonderful people and they they listen. They develop and they listen and they're so there for the reseller community. So. Yeah, and they and they offer tons of things like this. So I saw that they uh, worked with Mark II, the uh, not your dad's CPA, I believe. Yep. And um, so he's he's also does things specifically for resellers. And they've done other webinars and things with him. And they offer so much if you if you use them and and get involved with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they are walking the walk. Like yep. he is a reseller, right? <laughs> like, yes, yes, yes. She gets it. She yeah. totally gets it. Totally gets it. All right. Anything else you want to do? Anything else we need to talk about? Any other housekeeping? Everybody no. like us. Just everybody like us and subscribe. <laughs> and do all the things. 
<laughs> like us. You could, you know, if you really like us, you could pop over to um, Apple Podcasts and give us a review. And I think that you could do a review on Spotify. But we would love a five-star review. If you haven't done that yet for Apple Podcasts, it helps us out so much. And it helps us bring you more. One of those so. easy peasy, lemon squeezy ways that you can support our free content. Yes. <laughs> All right, ladies, until next time. Cheers. Thanks for joining Libby, Molly, and Samantha, the ladies of Consignment Chats, as we build a resourceful community of collaborative resellers. Find all the ways to connect with us on consignmentchats.com. Episodes are available on YouTube and anywhere you get your podcasts. In addition, join our free private Facebook community.